Hi guys and welcome back to another missing persons case. So this one today is a little bit different. I didn't do a gigantic case today only because I don't really have a lot of time. I'm going on vacation with my family um, on Saturday for a week and I still wanted to get something pre-filmed and put up so despite all my things to do this week I really wanted to get just something up. So I found this case that I thought was really really interesting. Um, the reason why I think I like it so much is because it goes along the lines of what I actually was studying for in school. Um, and one of my favorite things to do in high school when I took a forensics class, um, this case does not have a bunch of evidence, like none at all. And it's basically you trying to puzzle together what could have happened and what would make the most sense. Sorry, my dog's in the background. And it's basically like one giant puzzle that has still not been solved. And so I want you to hear my theories on it and I'm really, really interested to hear your theories on it. Um, another reason why this one was really interesting to me is because it actually lines up fairly well with um, my life, like it, it's weird, um, the woman who went missing is Joan Risch, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, Joan Risch went missing and she went missing on Raylan's birthday and her birthday was actually a day before mine and she had children the exact same age apart and she was a stay at home mom, there's just a bunch of things that kind of freak me out, so... I don't know. I mean, it made it more interesting for me. So Joan Risch lived in Lincoln, Massachusetts in 1961. Her husband actually was away on a business trip at the time of her disappearance and she had a four-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son. She was a really, really intelligent person. She was a publisher in New York City before she met her husband and they decided to move away from New York City and start a family where she actually gave up her career in order to be a stay-at-home mom for her children. That's a key point in the story. So the day she disappeared was October 24th, which once again is strange because that's Raylan's birthday, my daughter. That morning was completely normal. She went to the dentist with her daughter. She actually scheduled herself a checkup appointment on the 30th week following, and she cashed a check. She went and picked her husband up a present, got herself a bra, some other feminine products, got some groceries, like completely normal errands going on in the morning. She got home at about 11 a.m. She fixed her children lunch, sent her son to his crib to take a nap, and then sent her daughter across the street to play. So at around 2.15 p.m., neighbors started noticing a couple of strange things. Joan was seen standing right next to her car, just kind of staring at it, looked really, really dazed, almost like confused. After a couple of minutes of just standing there, um, a neighbor saw her running away, frantically holding something red. So shortly after, the woman that was watching Joan's daughter sent her back home because she had some errands to run. When she got back, she noticed that the daughter was actually standing there and ran up to her and was like, I can't find my mom and there's red paint all over the kitchen. When the woman went to go and check to see what was going on, she discovered that the red paint was not paint at all, it was actually blood. She also discovered that the phone had been ripped out of the wall because back then phones were, you know, hanging on walls and thrown into a trash can right near it and the phone book was actually opened up to the emergency contacts page. Upon further investigation, no calls had actually even been made. It appeared like there may have been a struggle because a chair was knocked over, there was a bloody thumbprint on the phone, there was a handprint on the wall, um, there was blood pretty much all over the house leading up to the bedroom where the sun was at and then back downstairs to the kitchen and back out to the car. So this is a very confusing case because they contacted the husband and immediately were able to realize he had nothing to do with anything, um, it, there was no foul play involved when it came to the husband. Um, all of the neighbors hadn't seen anything. Um, a couple of people actually reported a car parked out back around 3 p.m., which on the timeline would seem like maybe something was going on, maybe somebody broke in and parked their car out back so no one would see. Maybe she had that car as like an escape car. Um, There's really no telling, but the police kept turning that down and saying that it was just an unmarked cop car. However, if it was seen at around 3 p.m., the cops had not been notified that Joan was missing yet, so why would there be an unmarked cop car behind the house? Neighbors still think that that car had something to do with it. It was definitely not there for any good reason. So when it comes to the blood trail, um, the blood trail led from the kitchen all the way up to the room where the son was sleeping and then back out to the car. However, there were no bloody footprints. There wasn't mass amounts of blood. It was just kind of droplets leading along the way, which to the police meant that there was just some sort of superficial wound. It was nothing that would have caused any sort of extreme harm or danger. When they tested the blood, the blood was type 
O. And Joan also just so happened to be type O blood. They never actually were able to say if the blood was hers or not. Um, to me, they weren't able to figure out much, but then again, being 1961, I feel like a lot of technology is different. We probably would be able to figure things out a lot faster now. Um, but they were not able to 100% identify it as her blood. But to me, O blood's a very, very rare type of blood. It is not something that you see a lot. So the chances that someone came in and attacked her or anything in they blood and they also were O blood to me doesn't seem doesn't seem very very likely once again I could be wrong it could happen an off chance but to me I'm pretty sure that was her blood so another thing the only other bit of evidence that they found were the fingerprints on the phone and the wall and those also were completely inconclusive to me it's very very possible that it could have been her fingerprints um, if you haven't been in any sort of trouble with the law your fingerprints are not automatically going to be on file so just because they came back as inconclusive doesn't mean that they weren't Jones herself if she knew she'd never been in any sort of trouble with with the police and had never been fingerprinted before you can easily leave your fingerprints on absolutely everything and no one's gonna know that they're yours they also found on the floor that someone had tried to clean up the blood with paper towels and a pair of the Sun's overalls um, to me that's also kind of bizarre because it was literally just smeared around it wasn't actually like cleaned up and if it wasn't that much blood I don't understand I don't understand why someone would go to the trouble of trying to clean it up at all if they weren't planning on cleaning all of it up also, a little bit after three, which would line up with the car being out back, a woman was actually spotted on Route 128. So Route 128 was really, really close to their home and actually was under extreme construction and a bunch of drivers between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. actually called when they got home saying they had spotted a woman walking along the road, looked extremely confused, um, really, really dazed, and was covered in blood. Keep in mind as well, cell phones weren't a thing, so people couldn't immediately report something like that. They would have to wait till they got to their home phone and then report it. So this is where the theories come in, because to me, this case makes no sense. It's filled with so many insane holes, it's not even funny, but I feel like there's just enough to kind of give you a good idea of what happened. So someone who was actually investigating the case, a journalist, found her library card and figured out that she had checked out in the past six months 25 library books all surrounded on unexplained disappearances, unexplained murders, all these unexplained mysteries basically revolving around someone who was unhappy with their life and wanted to disappear and start a new life. So to me, that should have been like the big closer in the case as to what exactly happened. But for some reason, I just don't think they ever really looked too much into it. Her friends even said that she had said multiple times that she was extremely unhappy with the way her life was. She did not enjoy being a stay-at-home mom. She didn't feel very fulfilled. She felt like she didn't have enough purpose outside of her children. And it was something that bothered her frequently. A lot of people think maybe she was attacked, that maybe someone came and entered the home and then attacked her and then she suffered amnesia from the attack and then just kind of wandered off. And since Route 128 was under construction, she easily could have fallen in a hole somewhere or been covered up and nobody would would have known to me I mean I don't think that's very likely in this case it's very very obvious to me what's going on in this case um, I don't even see how there's any other theories out there that have even held any sort of ground she had no history of mental illness her family had no history of mental illness so the people who think she just had a mental break I understand it's very very difficult being a mother but I don't think a mental breakdown would have carried out the exact same way, but then again, I feel like we spend a lot of time trying to rationalize what people do when people who do crazy things are not thinking rationally, so of course us as rational people, we wouldn't see why they did what they did or, you know, their thought process behind their different steps along the way because we think rationally and they do not she had had a mental break maybe that was just how it happened maybe she just went crazy and hurt herself tried to call an emergency contact to come and help her and then maybe it was just too much for her and she thought maybe she should flee with her car and then just was really conflicted and then just ran off and disappeared it's it's pretty likely but to me other instances in this story point to something completely different so in one of the books that she actually checked out, her story almost played exactly to what the book said. So to me, I honestly think she just wanted to leave without a trace. I think every single thing from start to finish was planned. If you think about it, a lot of people try to use, oh, well, she made an appointment for this. She clearly, you know, had plans of being here. She did this. She had plans of being here. She bought this for her husband for when he comes back. I do agree that that could be signs of someone who 
planned on being there or it could be overly done signs of someone wanting to make sure you think they plan on being there. And to me, everything she did that day was almost like overkill. Um, so she went that morning and she got herself all this stuff. I don't know if it was normal for her to kind of splurge on herself, but she did. She bought a big present for her husband for when he came back. Um, she also scheduled an appointment for a week later at the dentist and just a lot of purposeful pre-planning to make sure it looked like she was still gonna be there a week from then. There were multiple visitors to the house that morning that said everything was perfectly fine. Once again, she probably wanted to make sure it was that way. Also, to me, I think, you know, if you are a mother, you're gonna feel really, really guilty if you're planning on faking a disappearance to leave your children. Um, and I think she knew that and she wanted them to be in the safest place possible, so she obviously sent her daughter away somewhere um, and she also had her son in the crib at nap time something that he couldn't get out of or harm himself in where he would be safe until someone found him i think this was all planned absolutely perfectly to me when i hear that she was standing beside the car and there were blood droplets on the car obviously she had already started staging stuff and so i'm sure she was extremely nervous she was extremely frantic and she was also questioning herself so her standing at the car for a prolonged period of time it wouldn't surprise me if she was questioning whether what she was doing was okay or not i mean think about if you were trying to leave your children had just made yourself bleed everywhere and created the scene um i'm sure you would be standing there at your car confused as to what to do you know, maybe she wanted to make sure that the blood was on the car so that it looked like she had tried to escape or maybe tried to get away from somebody. That's another possibility. Think about it, you know, if you were being attacked by somebody, your first thought's going to go to the phone and call an emergency contact number. So obviously she's going to leave the book open to an emergency contact number and then pull the phone out of the wall as if someone prevented her from calling. Obviously she's also going to make sure there's blood on the phone and on the wall nearby to make it look as if some attack had happened. Same thing with the chair. The only sign of a struggle was the chair pushed over. There was absolutely no sign of forced entry, no sign of any other sort of struggle. The chair had just been knocked over. So it doesn't make sense as to how anyone could have come in and attacked her. It like screams being staged to me. And then once again, obviously she's going to go upstairs and lead the blood trail with her to check on her son probably before she left to say goodbye, do whatever she needs to do, I'm not really sure. And then she went right back out to the car and then from there she disappeared. The book that she was reading where it almost played out exactly how she staged her own disappearance, they smeared the blood all over the place. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I feel like at that point she'd already started and so she was just trying to go and start doing all the things she remembered from the books because once again, it wasn't fully cleaned up, which didn't make much sense. And I think she used her son's overalls because she wanted to look like they had no sentimental value to make it look like someone else had done it. If someone was attacked and the person tried to clean it up, they would probably try to grab the nearest thing that, and of course that stuff's not gonna mean anything to them. But as a mother, if you had, you know, bled somewhere, though your first response wouldn't be to grab the closest pair of your children's clothing and use something that belongs to your children that you love so much to clean it up. So to me, it was all just one big staging. Everything just fits way too perfect. She waited till her husband was out of town so no one could possibly be there to stop anything. Everything was literally played out perfectly. She made sure she put on a good face for everybody. She also made sure that she made it look like she was planning on being there. I know a lot of people are gonna say, but she was seen on the highway covered in blood. Once again, think about it this way. No one had cell phones, so no one could immediately call like they would today if they saw someone doing that and be like, oh my gosh, go pick this woman up. Everyone would have to wait until they got home to do it, which meant if she did have someone that was out back waiting for her in that getaway car, or if that was her getaway car that she was driving herself, she could have staged that to make it look like you know, I want to make sure someone sees me looking crazy. I want to make sure someone sees me covered in blood so it looks like I'm running from someone or so it looks like I've gone crazy and just wandered off in a very dangerous area. So to me, even that is very easily explained as to how it could have been staged. Because even when people got home and called the cops, you know, it would be a while until the cops could get out there. So I'm not surprised. I think every single bit of this is staged and I want to know what you guys think down below. It is still an open case. It is still ongoing. There is literally no new leads. There's no other evidence. There's no one else who knows anything. I think she left and started a new life. I doubt she would be alive today, but I definitely think she made a run for it. I think she was unhappy and she decided to leave her family, which is really, really sad, but I just don't see any attack or kidnapping here. I think she left purposely. In all of the cases, 
all two of the other cases that I've done so far. There's been very obvious foul play evidence, I guess you could say, and very obvious, just obvious factors in it where something has gone very, very wrong. Um, with this one, it's too planned. It's way too planned. Like, to me, that's just so incredibly obvious. And I don't know if it's because I've honestly always had a passion for stories like this and figuring things out and putting pieces together. Like, this is literally like my favorite part and why I wanted to do criminology but let me know what you think down below it's very very different as well because this did happen so long ago that you know things were not the same back then this was the oldest case that i've done so far and it is crazy to see how little is actually written down about this um there's absolutely nothing on this and i have watched multiple other videos that people have done on this i have researched news that i could find and i found nothing there's very few articles about it um, and the ones I did find said the same things over and over and over again. Um, there's one video that I found, and I, if I can find it again, I'll link it down below that another YouTuber did on this, and she had a lot more information. Um, I didn't want to take her information just because I don't know how true it is, because I found none of it anywhere in my searching that I did. So um, she has an interesting story behind it. She has a lot more information and a lot different information that I found. So like I've said in every other video, I try my very best to find the most true factual evidence and storyline as I can but once again for some of these it's very very difficult to find that correct me down below on anything cases like this I just want to get your minds going and I really want people to be more aware that people go missing all the time and that sometimes it's not looked into enough and the more you talk about it the more chance there is that someone will find that person so do not hesitate to correct me if i'm wrong about anything in the comments below i do not want you guys to think you're hurting my feelings you're not i'm trying to get the best information out there and people read through comments all the time so correct me down below this is the most i could find on this case times are just really really different things are not documented the way they used to be. They're a lot more thorough and a lot more detailed. So let me know what you think happened down below. Let me know if you agree with me that it was very obvious that she clearly planned her own disappearance or let me know if you think someone attacked her or if she went crazy and ran off because as a mother I can understand how you can go crazy and run off. I really really can. Also, thank you guys so much. You guys are loving this. Like, I love making these videos, and when I decided that this is the way I wanted to go with this channel after having this channel open for months and after my vlog channel has been open for a year now, I was really nervous as to the response that I was going to get, and you guys have just blown my mind. Like, my Rebecca Corium like just blew up one day if any of you guys are watching and you just recently watched my Rebecca Corian video tell me how you found it because I literally looked and had 100 views one day and then in less than 12 hours it went over 2k views and I don't know how that happened that is not normal for a small youtuber especially on a channel that I just started so let me know how you found that down below because I'm very very interested to know but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I will have a video up next Saturday as well. I'm not making any promises only because this is my one week of vacation that I get the entire year to spend solely with my family and I'm so looking forward to it. I'm trying to find something interesting and you'll see if I'm able to post it next week that's not exactly missing persons related. So kind of exciting though it's still like a mystery thing but keep a lookout I really like this posting every Saturday thing it seems to be working really well for me and you guys seem to be able to watch the videos pretty fast after I put them up and you guys are freaking loving it so if you have any suggestions of who you want me to do next or any just kind of bizarre cases unsolved murders unsolved mysteries it doesn't have to be a missing persons case let me know down below or feel free to email me at the email that's listed in the description box let me know on Twitter let me know on Instagram wherever you want to do it anyways guys thank you so much for watching Watching, please give me a big thumbs up it helps me out more than you know if you haven't subscribe down below and I'll see you guys in next week's video bye mm -hmm.